So JD Sports have given us their full year earnings and they didn't disappoint. Revenues came in at a whopping 6.17 billion pounds, which was ahead of estimates. And they said that their UK stores, when they were open, obviously huge uh, disruption due to COVID, but when they were open, they showed 4% growth year on year. The US, they talked about an exceptional performance, uh, helped particularly by stimulus checks. Uh, they did see pickup in performance around the times that those stimulus checks have been sent out. I'd say one little wrinkle was on their guidance. They were talking about uh, making a profit before tax for the next year of between 475 million pounds to 500 million pounds. That compares to 421 million uh, that they made in this current year just finished. Now, um, people are expecting that number to be slightly higher, just above 500 million, so above the top end of that range. But it does appear the company at this stage are being quite conservative, uh, what with lots of uncertainties, etc. They don't want to overpromise and under deliver. Now we talked also a lot about inventories recently, particularly um, not only with the dis dislocations around COVID, but also that Suez Canal incident that meant a huge amount of stock is sitting in the wrong places. Um, they gave us some details on their inventory and it's kind of been muddied. You'll be aware they've made, they love making acquisitions. Uh, and in the last um, year they've made acquisitions. They've bought um, Shoe Palace, they've bought Downtown Locker Room, uh, they've bought Sizea in Eastern Europe as well. Um, but overall, if you take out the stock that they've got in, they've brought in with those acquisitions, if you strip all of that out, um, the, um, the inventories are actually down year on year. Now they're saying this is reflected due to a drop um, in the US inventories particularly, and they do highlight minor delays at ports, which has caused problems. They said it's not materially constraining on their financial performance, um, and things should sort themselves out as we go through this calendar year. They are seeing some pushbacks to launches of products, which we all know and are seeing uh, with our own eyes uh, week after week as things stand at the moment. Uh, another thing we have talked a lot about for the brands is DTC, this direct to consumer. And a lot of the wholesale companies like JD Sports, the smaller ones, are getting squeezed out by the brands. Uh, Nike recently at their earnings said that they are having um, significantly sort of positive conversations with their key wholesale partners. And JD Sports are definitely um, right at the top of the table here, particularly after their US acquisitions, um, not only a finish line, which they have brought, um, but Shoe Palace and that DTLR as well. So they are talking about having a very, very strong engagement with the brands and that continues to push forward. On the subject of finish line, they are gonna be rebadging all finish line stores as JD over the next five years. And they think that rebranding and that rebadging is going to be lifting the sales as well. Just lastly on distribution, again, it's something we have been talking about with regards to tariffs and some of the struggles that JD have had bringing product into the UK then to have to be then shipped into the EU and it's getting additional tariff charges. Um, they've signed a deal with a company called Clipper in the UK. That's for some e-commerce fulfillment. Obviously, huge amount of growth due to COVID with regards to online. And these shopping habits are probably going to stick somewhat. Um, so what are they getting from Clipper? It's a two-year deal they've signed up to. They're getting access to a 400,000 square foot warehouse, which is based uh, in and around Leeds. They're gonna be using that to fulfill e-commerce stuff. Also, this Clipper business are gonna be helping them actually not just only have the warehouse, but actually fulfilling the entire um, chain on those purchases. That means their existing Kingsway warehouse is gonna go back to supplying um, and fulfilling stuff going to stores. So it's gonna completely free things up. This should be a very positive move to give them much more scope to cope with online um, stuff uh, as well as um, to be able to just try and get the store supplies back to some kind of normality. They've also signed a deal um, in uh, Dublin for a warehouse for Ireland. So this is helping address that tariff situation. 
basically um, they're going to be able to have this uh, 65,000 square foot um, warehouse. It's going to be ready for the second half of this calendar year and that's going to be supplying the Irish market. Um, you may recall they've currently got one warehouse 80,000 square foot in Belgium that is used to distribute to the EU. I've said it before it's not large enough. I do expect them to be doing some more deals uh, and signing up where some fresh warehouses and giving themselves some more infrastructure and fulfillment capabilities um, in the EU. So what happened to the shares? Well, the shares were up 3% today. A little bit of nervousness, first of all. I think that guidance was somewhat spooking some people, but once the company went onto their conference call and allayed some fears, uh, you did start to see the shares have a bit of an edge up as the day went on. So a good solid update from JD Sports and you know they're continuing to tick all the right boxes and hopefully um, some of these fulfillment stuff can sort out some of the little niggles that we've seen um, during the increased demand for online business. If you've got any questions, please do give me a shout. Make sure you are following, subscribed, and have notifications on for full frame kicks, not only on Instagram, but also on YouTube as well. And myself, uh, Andy Wilson, The Sneakonomist on Instagram, and I'll see you soon.